accept that you will probably have to fight. In the 70s, and while the world is focused on the struggle in Vietnam, a similar, deadly, complex and ferocious war rages in southern Africa. The Rhodesian army, regarded as being among the best of its day, is repelling thousands of rebel soldiers attempting to overthrow the nation's government. Today, we'll be talking about the Rhodesian army and a nation standing alone. The Rhodesian army assumed the lead position in joint operations, overseeing all activities both within and outside Rhodesia. The COMOPS had direct command of joint operational centres, or JOCs, stationed around the country in each operational area. There was one JOC per operational area. The operational regions were called Operation Hurricane, that was the northeastern border, which began in 1972. Operation Thrasher, the eastern border, began in February 1976. Operation Repulse on the southeastern frontier began in May 1976. Operation Tangent, Matabili Land, beginning in August of 1976. Operation Grapple, the Midlands between, well, around August 1977. Operation Splinter, or Cariba, began in June of 1977. And Operation Salops, in and around Salisbury in 1978 and onwards. Rhodesians have much to fear from an escalation of terrorist activity. I don't think so. We are pretty tough fellas, you know. The Rhodesian army was small, but it was made up of approximately the army headquarters, the Rhodesian Light Infantry, the Rhodesian SAS, the Celis Scouts, the Rhodesian Armoured Car Regiment, the Grey Scouts, the Rhodesian African Rifles, the Rhodesia Regiment with eight battalions, the Psychological Action Group, the Defence Regiment, the Intelligence Corps, the Artillery Corps, six engineer squadrons numbered 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, etc. Five engineer support battalions. There was the 1st Brigade, Bulawayo, with responsibility in Matabili Land, which had a headquarters and a signal squadron. The 2nd Brigade, Salisbury, which led the responsibility in Mashona Land. Rug headquarters, signal squadron, 12 signal squadrons, and Llewellyn Barracks. The 3rd Brigade, Umtali, with the area of responsibility in Manika Land, headquarters abbreviation HQ3, signal squadron, etc. The 4th Brigade, the 4th Victoria. There were two service area HQs, two ordnance and supply depots, Bulawayo and Salisbury, two base workshops, one air supply platoon, three maintenance companies, three medical companies and an army health unit, the Sanga Lounge, five provost platoons and army detention barracks, six pay companies, the Rhodesian Army Education Corps, the Rhodesian Corps of Chaplains, Army Records and Army Data Processing Unit, Railroad and Transport Organisation Platoon, one military postal unit. The Rhodesian security forces from 1964 to 1980 traced their history back to the British South Africa Company Armed Forces, which were established during the company's administration in the 1890s. In 1923, the British province of Southern Rhodesia formed its own armed forces, which later joined the Federation of Rhodesia and the Yasaland in 1953. Over the course of around two decades, things had changed dramatically. The regular army was always quite small, but by 1978 to 1979, it had around 10,000 and a half regulars and approximately 40,000 reservists. While the regular army had a professional corps recruited from the white populations, and some units such as the Rhodesian SAS and the Rhodesian Light Infantry were entirely white, by the late 70s, the majority of its complement was made up of black soldiers. Whites made up the majority of the army reservists. The rank of Lieutenant General would hold command over the Rhodesian Army, held by Peter Wallace from 1972 until the disintegration of the army, and its role would be that of an overall field commander, but also hold the political office of Commander of the Land Forces. It was comparable to a three-star rank and was recognisable by the cross baton and sword with the Rhodesian Star and one wreath line tusk, similar to that of the British insignias. The Major General held command over a division, a corps or a staff position, with the size of the force depending on where they were commanding. It was comparable to a two-star rank and was recognisable by a cross baton and sword with one wreathed lion with tusk. 
The rank of Brigadier would hold a number of commands ranging from Brigade to a Staff Command, and it was also comparable to a 1 star rank, and the Retignia consisted of around 1 Wreath Lion with Tusk and 3 Rhodesian Stars. The rank of Colonel would hold command over a regiment or a staff office with approximately 500 to 1000 men under their command depending on the theatre, and their insignia consisted of one wreath line with tusk and two Rhodesian stars. The rank of Lieutenant Colonel would hold executive command over a battalion, regiment or well staff position, usually a battalion though, with approximately 250 to 500 men in it. And their insignia consists of one wreath line with tusk and one Rhodesian star. The rank of major would hold second in command position of a battalion or command a company, battery or a squadron with approximately up to 250 men under their command. They may also hold a staff position, although this officer position would be given after roughly 8 to 10 years of service. Their insignia consists of one wreath line with tusk. The rank of Captain would hold command over a battery, a company or a squadron position with approximately up to 100 men though it might be over or less and they would receive this rank after 3 to 4 years of service and their insignia consisted of 3 Rhodesian stars. The Lieutenant or well, First Lieutenant would hold command over a troop or platoon position with approximately 30 to 50 men under their command. The officer would receive the rank after 1 to 2 years of service consisting of 2 stars was the insignia. The rank of Second Lieutenant would primary or secondary command over a platoon position with approximately 30 to 50 men under their command. An officer would receive the rank directly after completing officer training and their insignia consists of one Rhodesian star. The rank of Warrant Officer 1 and 2's principal function would be that of a Sergeant Major, occupying important senior command roles akin to that of a Quartermaster, Company NCO and so forth. They would play a crucial part in maintaining the channel of communication between officers and their enlisted men. The first class's emblem was that of the Rhodesian Crest in gold and the second class's was the Lion and Tusk surrounded by a gold wreath as their insignias. It was occasionally awarded after long periods of extremely efficient service for around 18 to 20 years. Although during the nature of this war it might be more or less, it's unsure. The rank of Staff Sergeant would have a senior role in the advisement of a company or platoon of approximately 35 to 50 soldiers and it would be awarded after a few roughly non-specific years as a sergeant and its insignia would consist of three chevrons and a line with tusk above it. The rank of Sergeant would hold command over a squad of several teams and it would usually be awarded after 8 years of service but given the nature of the war as many of these ranks it would roughly change. The insignia consists of three downward facing chevrons. The rank of corporal would normally hold command over a team and it would normally be promoted after three or specialist training and the rank insignia consists of two downward facing chevrons. The rank of lance corporal would hold second in command position of a team and it would normally be promoted to after specialist training or two to three years of service and the rank insignia consists of one downward facing chevron. The rank of private had no official command or insignia and would be the rank given to any individual after their basic training though in this case it tended to often be trooper instead of private in the Rhodesian army. Well I hope you all enjoyed today's video as much as I enjoyed making it. You know this was a bit of a quick one but I had to get something out there just because I, I, I don't like leaving you guys too long without any content in case you all disappear. But um, I've just been I've just been really busy. Um, haven't quite had the chance to make a lot of videos. But uh, the summer is coming up, and I will be more free, so I'll try and get more active. But with that, thank you for sticking around. Thank you for watching the video. It really means a lot to me, and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day.